Welcome to the Commerce Mentorship Program's online lecture series. My name is Richard and I'm the online tutor for Commerce 294, Managerial Accounting. Today we'll be focusing on relevant decision making, the last section of the course. By now you should be familiar with segmented income statements, the concept of opportunity costs, and the difference between fixed costs and variable costs. I will begin by providing you with a brief overview of the subject matter, pointing out key formulas and tips that you will need to succeed in this course and this topic. I will then guide you through some questions relevant to the course material. This is a good time to test your knowledge and understanding of the subject matter. Pause the video before I present the solution and attempt to complete the question on your own. You will know that you have mastered the concepts presented when you are able to complete the questions independently. Remember that you should not measure success on this video alone. Accounting requires practice, and the more exercise you are able to complete from your textbook and from your instructor, the higher your likelihood of success in this course. At the end of this video, I will review our goals and objectives for today. Your job is to ensure that you have met each of these objectives and that you fully understand them. If you have any questions at any time during this video, please make a note of it and speak to your instructor or teaching assistant. Not everyone will initially understand the concepts discussed, and as such, you may find that you require some assistance. Do know that that is alright. By the end of this video, you should be able to systematically determine whether a company should scrap or keep a resource. You should be able to systematically determine whether a company should make or buy a resource. Our first relevant decision making scenario involves systematically determining whether we should scrap or keep a resource. With scrap or keep questions, it is important to remember to pick one side or the other, not both. For example, if your car was on its last limbs and you were left with a decision of either scrapping it or keeping and repairing it, analyze the question as though you were keeping it. Or analyze it as though you were scrapping it. Regardless of the point of view you take on, the answer and decision should be the same. Once you have picked a side, Analyze the question to find its relevant costs. As a reminder, relevant costs are costs that are actually relevant to a particular decision. For example, the cost of the bagel you had for breakfast generally is irrelevant when deciding whether to scrap or keep your car. After you've done that, determine whether each cost creates an inflow or outflow of cash. For example, if you have chosen to repair your car and it takes $2,500 to repair it, the $2,500 would cause a negative outflow. Once that is complete, you simply add up all the relevant costs. A positive result will indicate that you have made the right decision. A negative result will indicate that the right answer is in the opposite direction. Let's try an example. The Cartown Cable Company was recently offered $100,000 for an old trolley bus they purchased in 1994 for $150,025. The trolley bus has been with the company for 15 years, and during that time, it has undergone the following repair and maintenance costs. The trolley bus has also undergone equipment depreciation of $75,012.50 over its 15 years with the company. The trolley bus has a useful life of 30 years. If Cartown keeps the trolley bus, it will need to undergo safety recertification by a local safety inspector who charges $600 per inspection. It will also need a new paint job to cover up some graffiti. This paint job will cost $250. If Cartown sells the trolley bus, they will need to purchase a used diesel bus from the Sandyville Transit Commission to cover the routes previously served by the trolley bus. The new diesel bus will cost Cartown $100,450. The required question is, should Cartown Cable Company keep the trolley bus or sell it? I'm going to analyze this question as if Cartown was selling the trolley. For extra practice, try taking an opposing point of view. If Cartown decided to sell the trolley, they would receive the offer of $100,000, therefore causing an inflow of cash of $100,000. The $150,025 they originally purchased the trolley bus for is a sunk cost and is therefore not relevant to this decision. The repair and maintenance costs the trolley has undergone are also sunk costs, as the trolley would have already undergone this repair and maintenance regardless of whether Cartown decides to sell or keep the trolley now. Depreciation is another sunk cost. 
How much the trolley bus has depreciated over 15 years has no impact on our current decision. What we should consider, though, is a $600 inspection and $250 paint job. As both of these items can be avoided if Cartown sells the trolley, this creates a $600 and $250 inflow of cash. Finally, Cartown will purchase a new diesel bus if, if they sell their old trolley, and as such, selling the trolley bus will create an outflow of $100,450. So if we analyze the question as if Cartown was selling the trolley, to summarize, this is what would happen. The trolley bus would create an inflow of $100,000. Safety recertification would cause an inflow of $600. Uh, the paint job would cause an inflow of $250, and the diesel bus would cause an outflow of $100,450. The net result is a $400 inflow. As the result is positive, we know that the best decision for Cartown is to sell the trolley bus. Another common decision-making scenario is the make or buy situation. Generally, in this scenario, a company either chooses to produce a product input on their own or to buy the product from a different company. This type of question is very similar to the previous scrap or keep scenario. Pick one side or the other, not both. For example, a toy car company may decide to either manufacture their own plastic wheels for their toy cars or to purchase the plastic wheels from an external supplier. Similar to the scrap or keep scenario, you add up all your relevant costs and pick the decision with a positive result. Let's try an example. In Sound Off Radio has been writing and recording the music it plays over the airwaves for the last 15 years. They have developed a base of 2,500 loyal listeners and have built a music collection with a netbook value of $5,500,000. Over the past two weeks, SoundOff has lost 25% of its loyal fan base to competing radio stations because of its inability to produce and play a new style known as Rechno. They now have the choice to invest in the equipment necessary to make Rechno music or to purchase the music from an artist who specializes in the Rechno genre. The potential artist, Lord Rara, is offering a price of $5,000 per song for the 500 songs that SoundOff requires to maintain a variety of song choices. SoundOff producers believe that it will cost the company an average of $10,500 per song to produce the 500 songs it needs, based on the following equipment and material needs. Here's some additional information that you may also find important to keep in mind. Please pause the video if you do require this additional information. The required question is, should SoundOff buy Rechno from Lord Rara or produce it in their own recording studio? I'm going to analyze the question as if SoundOff was buying the music from Lord Rara. For extra practice, try taking an opposing point of view. If SoundOff purchased the music from Lord Rara, they would face an outflow of cash of $2,500,000. Looking at some of the costs required to produce the 500 songs, we can rule out some of the costs based on the fact they are not relevant to this decision. Fixed manufacturing overhead is not relevant as SoundOff has to pay for the studio regardless of whether Rechno is recorded in the studio or not. Allocated other manufacturing overhead is also not relevant as it will still be incurred regardless of whether Rechno is produced in-house or not. The station manager has simply allocated a portion of it to Rechno. The station manager is an unavoidable cost, as he or she will be hired regardless of whether the music will be produced or bought. Therefore, the station manager is not relevant. We can also rule out dressing room light bulbs on the fact that there are already more than enough of them in inventory. If we purchase the songs from Lord Rara, the purchase cost of songs from Lord Rara creates a $2,500,000 outflow. Compact discs a $2,500 inflow. Direct labor, an inflow of $100,000. Rechno recording equipment, an inflow of $127,500. And variable manufacturing overhead would cause an inflow of $1 million. The net result is a $1,270,000 outflow. Therefore, our decision should be to produce our songs in our, in their own recording studio and not purchase the songs from Lord Rara. This concludes the first part of our online tutorial on relevant decision making. 
Let's review our objectives for today. By now, you should be able to systematically determine whether a company should scrap or keep a resource, systematically determine whether a company should make or buy a resource. If you are unable to complete any of these objectives, now is a good time to rewatch this video or complete more exercises related to this section. Remember that Commerce 294 is a course that requires a great deal of practice and application, so don't underestimate the power of a sample question. For additional problems, please visit us at cmp.cusonline.ca. If you have any additional questions, please consult your prof professors or teaching assistants. Thank you for